Hello everybody, welcome back to my website, YouTube. Uh, this is a jet ski engine. Um, after finishing the little nine foot boat I have, Crispy sent me a message. Or comment, I guess. But anyway, jet ski next. And I thought to myself, you know what, the girlfriend wants a jet ski. Actually, she wants a couple jet skis, so her and her friends, when they uh, want to go out to the river, they can play around jet skis. So, I was like, you know what? Jet skis are a dime a dozen around here. I'm going to get some jet skis and I'm going to start learning about them. So I went and found a pair of jet skis. A little low price of 100 bucks. Both of them were complete junk, of course. But rather than learning by reading service manuals and stuff, I just figured I'd get a couple, tear them apart, see how they work, and then start finding some nice ones and fix them up. So I uh, one of the collections I got was a Polaris 760. I think it's an SL 760 from 96. Uh, this is the engine out of it. It was probably one of the nicer junky junk skis that I got. Uh, but it's got a bad motor. The rear cylinder here, it has zero PSI. Front cylinder here has 120. Uh, I see that problem a lot on forum posts like, hey, I just got an outboard, um, did a compression check, one has zero, is that an easy fix? Most of the time, absolutely not. The engine screwed up. You might get lucky sometimes, but with zero PSI, like nothing coming out of the compression gauge, most of the time this thing is toast. So I'm going to open it up, and we're going to see what happened to it. Now, this is pretty much right out of the jet ski. I haven't really done anything to it except for the compression check, removed all the crap around it, pulled, pulled the thing out. But when I was removing the carburetors and then the reed plates, that's when I kind of noticed something. Nice and clean. Metal bits. So, right off the bat, you can tell there's some pretty serious internal, internal damage. So I'm going to pull off whatever this thing is, pull off the cylinder heads, take off the cylinders, and we'll take a look at the pistons and see what they are. Uh, what I like about jet skis so far is they're kind of like old airplanes where you just replace the entire cylinder if there's a problem. Uh, but I don't think this one's going to be any good either. Looking at it through the exhaust here, I can see some scoring, so... Chances are this whole thing is toast, but let's see the inside. Also another notable thing, the outboards I work on, they're all SAE or American Standard, fractional bolt sizes. Uh, this thing, they're all metric, so I actually had to bust out the old metric to tools, which I haven't touched in a long, long time. I don't know, just notable. All right, back to Nothing weird so far. All right, cylinder heads are off. And you know, again, learning about jet skis just rip them apart. I was thinking that this was the cylinder head pop it off, and there they are. Looking at it now, Four bolts for the cylinder head is a bit silly. The little cylinder head cap thing, that makes sense. Anyway, let's take a look. So there is a hole straight in the rear piston. That would explain the zero PSI because there's quite literally a hole in it. Top, over here, eh, not bad. That, holes. You got one here, one here, and uh, yeah, well, let's take it apart some more.
that's almost out of there. This needs a little more help, I think. All right, as predicted, there is a large chunk missing out of the cylinder. And as you can see by the discoloration, this thing got quite hot. Personally, I don't believe it's a, a cooling issue. If you've seen the way the jet ski's cooling system works, it has a little pickup in the end of the jet. So when the jet's on, which is when the engine's running, it's forcing water out of the jet. It's getting into the pickup system and going through the engine. I suppose the only way to really lose cooling would be a pinched or missing hose. Or one of the, uh, the cooling system is mostly plastic connectors, but if one of those broke, then I could see it. Problem is if the uh, seat was off, you would see water just rushing everywhere inside the ski when it was running. Give you a pretty clear indication there's a problem. Taking it apart, I didn't see one. I don't believe it's a cooling issue, and probably an oiling issue. Chances are a little auto mixing oil pump thing that's inside of these things failed, or they didn't have oil in it and ran it anyway, causing this kind of problem. Um, a part of me thought the front cylinder was going to be okay, the rear was going to be the one that was a problem, but it makes sense, no oil in and the engine, they're both going to be screwed up. So, as I said earlier, yeah, you just change out the, uh, that cylinder and you're good to go. Yeah, that's probably only the case on a, uh, a standard wear issue, like, you know, just engine still in, you know, good mechanical condition, it's just worn out. And swap the cylinders, bore them, pistons, whatever. Uh, the problem with that is all of the boring or cylinder replacing in the world isn't going to clean out all these metal shavings out of the bottom end here. So this entire thing needs to be replaced. Now, if you got a jet ski, outboard, engine, whatever, with zero PSI, you know, most of the time, these are the problems you're going to find. So it's not an easy fix. Chances are, major problem. What do you think it sounded like? Here's another good look at uh, how it should look, how it does look. If you notice, there's a chunk of the piston missing out right here. Nice back here. Yeah. Missing there. Nothing there. There's a chunk here. No chunk there, so air is pretty much able to get right by. What a pile of junk. Well, that's it for now. If anybody has any interest in some low-hour Polaris parts, you let me know. I'm kidding, of course, this thing's going in the trash. And the whole jet ski, it the whole, eh, okay. But, you know, it needed a paint job, needed upholstery, needed handle grips. Um, Rub reels, they were they were quite faded. Uh, it needed well, an engine and some electrical work. All in all, that jet ski may not have been worth you know the money I paid for it. So it was 100 bucks for jet ski, two jet skis and a trailer. Trailer probably worth 100 bucks. Uh, it's 15 bucks to throw away each jet ski. So I'm total 130 into it. I got a 130 dollar trailer and one junk jet ski. Now the other one wasn't much better condition wise. The other one was a 95 Sea-Doo. I also found another 95 Sea-Doo. The hull is just immaculate, so I figured between the two I could make one good jet ski out of them. Uh, more on that probably in summertime because it's too cold to go out there and get the thing. But, you know, this one, the Polaris, it was the oddball out of the bunch. Didn't need it, didn't want it, and probably for the better. Now the inner cylinder here, the bed, piston. It's it's about what you'd expect. It's no holes or anything, but bad scoring, rusting. This guy, not the best in the world, but not the worst. Comparing the two, this you know, the front's a night and day difference. But backside's okay. Still a scoring up here. It doesn't matter. The thing's junk anyway. All right, everybody. Hope you like this video. Maybe we'll do some more jet skis in the future. We probably will, since I you know, still have three of them now. If you plan on buying an engine with zero PSI compression, expect this. How do I get this thing out?